Another tech tips video, and I already promised this one, so I might as well finish it. I did make a streaming guide video back in 2018. Man, that was a long time. I mean, look at this prick. I used to be real thin. You can still watch that just fine, especially if you want to stream game consoles, but here's a guide specifically for my APB streams, which is what I do most frequently. I'm gonna cover the most general guides that are specific for my typical APB streams, but I will also link to a couple more detailed tutorials if you want a more detailed overlook on the entire thing. The timestamp are linked down below or you can just follow YouTube's video sections feature. Alright, let's get to it. Let's start with my video setup. My video setup is very simple. I have two desk lamps, one at the top of my dresser and one right next to me. These desk lamps are filled with two 12 watt smart lamps made by Bardi. These smart lamps cost about $9 each and I can tune in the color tone and the brightness and all of that. The desk lamps themselves are super cheap too. They cost like $4 each. You can find them in all sorts of stores. I bounce these lamps off of the walls with the walls essentially acting like diffusers because I don't like these lamps shining directly to my face and my eyes will hurt if it does. I have two lamps so that I can balance the left and right illumination on my face. This isn't really that necessary, in fact some people might prefer to be illuminated in one side and have the other side to be slightly darker to add that mystery, but I prefer to have it evenly lit on both sides. As for the camera, I use the Logitech C922 webcam and I have no plans to upgrade. I bought this a while ago for about $100 at the time, not exactly the ideal price for this webcam. On Amazon, you can get them for about $82 at the time of writing this video. You can also get its sibling, the C920, for about $80 with roughly similar quality. The webcam is easy to install at the top of the monitor. As long as you have good lighting, you can also get good video with this webcam. Now let's get into the audio. The microphone that I use for a good portion of the episodes is the Rode NT-USB Mini, which costs around $100. Bucks. My brother, on the other hand, uses the Samsung Q to you. These two microphones are amazing, especially if you're just starting up, especially the Rode NT Mini. It uses Type-C and Type-C is always amazing. There's also the Fifine K669B, which is also a great starting USB microphone for cheap. The Samsung Meteor is also amazing. I also have a couple of USB microphone alternatives that I don't have. Elgato Wave 1, Raisin Siren Mini, HyperX Solocast, Audio-Technica AT2100, AT2005. All of that combined with a cheap boom arm and a pop filter and you get yourself an amazing setup and please use a boom arm the closer the microphone is to your mouth the better it sounds oh. the closer your microphone is to your mouth the better it sounds. Only use the desktop stands if you're traveling and you need a quick microphone setup, and I have loads of them, it's insane. But those are USB microphones, which are excellent if you just want to start up. I, on the other hand, take it to the next level with proper XLR microphones. The microphone that I'm using for the majority of this video is a BM800. Don't let that gold color fool you. This is nothing fancy. These microphones are generic condenser microphones that are manufactured by loads and loads of companies. This one is made by Taftware. And here's the stupid thing about this microphone. It's a cardioid microphone, which means that it's going to pick up audio in front of the microphone, but the logo is put in the back of where you're supposed to speak on the microphone, which is incredibly counterintuitive. I know this because not only it sounds better when you put the logo in the back, you can actually see through the grill and notice that there's a wire connecting to the condenser capsule and the capsule is connected to the back of it. You can see it in real life that there is a bit of a wire hanging and that wire that's connected to the capsule should be in the back of the microphone. Anyway, this microphone costs around $10. 10 freaking dollars, which already includes a shock mount too. If you like the sound that you're listening right now, you can get this quality for $10 and a little bit of EQ and compression at post-production. Here's how the microphone originally sounded with no post-processing. I only boosted this microphone by a couple of decibels so that it sounds clear for you guys. This is the microphone completely raw with zero audio boost. I do record my volume at lower gain so that I have a lot more editing headroom, more 3, 2, 1, warning, high volume screaming headroom, and the microphone doesn't end up clipping, which is a lot harder to fix. And this is how the microphone sounded after an equalizer and compressor, which I'm gonna apply to the rest of the video. Now, the BM800 came with an XLR to a 3.5mm jack that you can plug into the PC, or a cheap sound card, 
but I use an audio interface for this one, which is overkill, but it does give the microphone a much clearer signal. It's a Rode AI-1 audio interface. It's a really damn good audio interface that is overkill for the BM-800, but it has 48 volts phantom power, which the BM-800 needs to perform really well. And it's Type-C. Thank you so much for that. I was using the Rode NT-Mini, which also uses Type-C, so I can just use the cable that I use for that microphone for this interface. This interface costs about $140. It's from Rode, and they do make some really high-quality audio gears. While it only supports one XLR plus instrument combo port, that's pretty much all I need, and apparently this interface can drive the notoriously quiet SM7B. Thankfully, you don't really need to spend that much for a single audio interface. My brother actually has an audio interface as well. It's the M-Audio M-Track Solo, which he uses primarily for playing the bass. That one costs about $55 on my region. There's also the Bear Ranger UM2, which can also cost less than $100, but I don't recommend that, at least for music production. For video and vlogging purposes, it's okay, but even still, a couple of the alternatives I recommend are the Focusrite Scarlet 3rd Gen, the Audient Evo 4, Presona Studio 24C, or if you have loads of money, the TC Helicon Go XLR. If you want more microphone recommendations and audio hardware tutorials in general, go check out Bandrew's podcast stage channel. He has loads of not just microphones, but audio interface reviews. It's amazing and very informative. I highly recommend it. Loads and loads of great tutorials there. And now we get into the most complicating setup, voice speeder. Voice speeder is really, really complicating. And uh, if I explain every single bit of detail and what every buttons and every dials do, uh, it's gonna take forever. So I'm just gonna explain to you what I use voice beater potato for and the effects that I use for voice beater potato. The first effect that I use is equalizer. Now what equalizer does is it will give the microphone a bit more bass or treble, uh, make it so that it sounds a little bit more colorful. So the, the color palette here, you can customize the input of the microphone, your voice right here, so that it actually sounds good. And if I put it the microphone right here, for example, now the microphone actually has a bit more uh, treble, a bit more bass, and I really like it. I prefer it to stay this way, but you can also put it somewhere you want it. You could give it a bit more high end, put more emphasis on the high end, but personally, I like it here. And uh, yeah, that's basically just a very quick and dirty e equalizer that should do the job for most of the microphones. And it really does the job for a, a lot of the microphones that I plug in, even like the crappy USB microphones. It sounds pretty good once I put in the this quick and dirty equalizer. I also use the voice meter's noise gate. Essentially what it does is it will turn off the microphone if there's no voice. So, so that none of the background noise uh, actually come in and get picked up by the microphone. So if I put in the noise gate at a specific percentage, in this case, I put it at seven. Uh, if I go silent, the microphone will not pick up any noise. But if I don't get silent, you might hear some noise in the background right there. So if I put it, the noise gate in, complete silence, not a lot of noise. And I prefer to have that at seven, it should do the job. And the other one that I have here is ASIO for all. Uh, this is more my personal preference. I feel like the WDM and the MME drivers for the for my particular microphone is not very good at delivering zero near to zero latency monitoring. And I feel like ASIO is the best driver to actually deliver that. And again, this is more reserved for advanced users. So I'm sorry for the new, for the noobs who don't know what I'm talking about. Essentially what I want is to be able to listen to back to the voice that I say on the desktop. And I feel like ASIO for all is the one that actually gives the least amount of delay between my uh, me speaking and the desktop processing and actually throwing the voice back to me. So yeah, that's what I do with the uh, ASIO for all, uh, just to have that zero latency monitoring and also to be able to route uh, all the channels properly here. For my video productions, I use Dark Audacity, which is basically Audacity, but dark, and hopefully without the anti-privacy BS that I talked about in my last video. Unlike the last time where I used Audacity's own equalizer plugin, this time I use a free VST plugin called TDR Nova, which will allow me to edit my audio in Audacity in real time. I'll link this VST plugin down below. This plugin seems complicating, but it's actually not that hard to use. The fact that I can edit my audio in real time just to find the right tone that I want out of this microphone is amazing. Take a listen to how this works. Only use the desktop stands if you're trapped. 
Only use the desktop stands if you're traveling and you need a quick microphone setup, and I have loads of them, it's insane. But those are USB microphones, which are excellent if you just want to start up. I, on the other hand, take it to the next level with proper XLR microphones. The microphone that I'm using for the majority of this video is a BM800. Don't let that gold color fool you. I love it. It's freaking cool. Oh, one more thing. Headsets. The headset that I'm using right now is an open back headset, the Philips Ace HP 9500. This this is an amazing headset. It's one of the most comfortable headsets that I've ever used. I can use this long term and still feel comfortable. This one costs about $100 in my country. My brother on the other hand uses either the Audio-Technica ATH AIM40X, which is an amazing close back headphone, especially for the bass, or the Samsung SR850. The Samsung SR850 is one of the most amazing sounding headsets I've heard in a while. Like you wear this and listen to it and you genuinely feel like you're listening to some studio grade stuff if you haven't tried an audiophile gear yet. I highly recommend these and they cost around $40 to $50. Absolute freaking bargain these headphones. Also shout out to Dankpods. I thank you for his recommendation of not just the SR850 but also the KZZSN Pro and the Grado. I love these. They're amazing. I highly recommend them to everyone. Now let's talk about the softwares that I use for streaming. OBS is the primary one here. It's a really feature packed software. There are loads of settings to tune. I'm not going to get into the details because there are loads of elements, scenes, lists, lots of things to cover and it's gonna take forever to cover every single part of these elements. There are loads of OBS tutorials out there. Harris Heller or Alpha Gaming made his own tutorial. There's also Epos Vox who made a complete masterclass playlist. Loads of people make their own OBS tutorial. I'm just here telling you what I do in OBS. OBS is the one software that I use to switch between the streaming scenes and transition from one scene to the other. I generally use four primary scenes. The first one is the thumbnail of the stream. The second one is the camera focus Q&A session where the focus is primarily on the stream's chat. The third one is the intro scene where I showed the intro on the stream. And the last one is the hoopless scene where the focus is primarily on the PowerPoint slides I presented, which is basically just showing my laptop screen. Now, every stream, I will always say Streamlabs, Streamlabs, Streamlabs. But what is Streamlabs? Well, Streamlabs is the live streaming software that has all of the tools and overlays that you need. If you click on my Streamlabs link right down below, it will lead you into a page where you can send a super chat to me and donate to me. Once you do, the Super Chats will pop up in the video and I'll read it to you. The people who did Super Chats will be displayed down there and the amount of Super Chats I got is displayed here. The target is $69 and if I reach it, I will reset the counter and change it to nice number one, get to 69 again and I'll reset the counter and change it to nice number two and so on and so forth. And finally, to stream everything into the web, I use a website called Restream, which essentially allows me to stream to not just YouTube, but also to Twitch. Restream also has a chat bot that will send all the Twitch chats into YouTube YouTube and vice versa. I've been using Restream for a while now and I am a happy customer for them. And that's pretty much it. That's my streaming setup for 2021. I know I don't cover a whole lot in this video, but it should give you a more general idea. If you have any questions and if you want to know more details, let me know, not in the comments, but directly in my social media where I am more active. Send me a DM on Twitter or send me an email. I'll be sure to respond to your questions. That's all for the video today. If you like it, you can go ahead and click like button and subscribe for more. If you wish, you can support the channel. Links down below and thanks for watching.